you're gonna see me get into a bunch of carnival games like darts, pool, hockey, and basketball. You're gonna see me do a podcast with Aubrey. And then most importantly, you're gonna see me rock this theater in a Q&A session for the ages. You got your perspective. I just wanna be happy, don't you wanna be happy? That really stopped me dead in my tracks and I'm gonna tell you why. I'm obsessed with perspective. Like, I genuinely believe you find what you're looking for. If you are looking for bad right now, it's a piece of cake. If you're looking for good right now, it's a piece of cake. I'm just asking you what the fuck are you looking for? Yeah, uh, no, I know. I fucking had to pull back in. Would have got kicked out. I was out. to you this morning. We're Thank you, bro. His mom said, "Literally, she uh, tagged me in a video of yours this morning. Like, <laughs> I never seen anything like." And I was like, "What are the chances of that?" That's crazy. Really, What's her name? Uh, Michelle. Harm- Give she it works for Remax. So let's here. let me hit, let's let's surprise her. Michelle. <laughs> oh, you want me to Facetime I'm, I'm her? Gonna, Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> Michelle. Timing is everything. Everything. <laughs> She'll be blown That's away. Funny. Thanks, man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Here. Yeah, I got you, man. Appreciate it, dude. Man, I'm all nervous and shit. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks, so, so, Thanks man. Yo, don't tell him. Shh. You know we're doing it. Ooh. <laughs> what do you? What would you like to happen? But I want to do it bigger. That like, makes you know sense. Like I want to, I want to just do it in a in a in a bigger sense and just cast my net wider and just. So cup, 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 couple things. You'll like this. Like it's kind of like working out or like eating properly. Like ironically, ironically, not a lot changes. It just becomes, you know, you're getting the results of putting out the work. Literally, you're one day away from a video or a piece of content, really changing the outcome of the growth. But the reality is, even if you don't have something go bananas. The reality is that one, two, three pieces of content a day keeps putting another block, another block, another block, right? You know, like the way you get a, a real muscular body is by putting the work in the gym every single day. There is no shortcut. So let me ask you this. How often are you posting on Instagram? Um, I post like two times a day. So to me, one of the things to just debate is, is it four, right? Like, is it actually just four? Because the reality is, for me, it's four, by the way. That's my number. And, you know, I always think about it should be five. You know, like, do you, you know, so that to me is one place where to answer your question directly, you can do, you can get bigger by putting out more content. The other question becomes, what other things are you putting out? So where are you? Obviously, I see what you're doing on Instagram. Where are you when it comes to um, LinkedIn or Twitter or podcasts or things of that nature? Where are you on that? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm... Hello? Yeah, sorry, alarm went off. Go ahead. Where I'm at is like Instagram and YouTube. But see, I didn't grow up using this stuff. So just me handling Instagram alone, it's like, like, you know, it's crazy for me, right? And, and Instagram and YouTube, and I come from prison. So we're not used to like really opening our <laughs> I get it, I get so, it. Okay, I get it. You know, you know what's funny? You'll appreciate this. You know, I was I was born in Russia, right? And grew up in a in a household with two parents that lived their entire life in Russia. And, and like the last thing you do in communism is share. So I understand the concept of even for me, like it was a process as an extrovert. You know, like it was a process. But the reality is, you're doing it, right? Like what's cool about you for me and the way you're talking right now is when you know. But I'm from prison. I didn't grow up with this stuff. We don't share. Is normally what people say when they're not doing anything. The fact that you're already doing now it's just chipping away daily. Like listen, you need to be doing Twitter. I'm telling you right to your face. It's gonna work for you and your style of content. Like, I honestly think you should be putting out content on LinkedIn about one thing specifically. How to be successful when people re-enter the world from prison and how companies can be using those. That level of adversity is actually a remarkable advantage if it's manifested properly, right? So I think there's places that you have permission to go to that I can't go to. You know, I can't, from a first party point of view, talk about what it's like or what my thoughts are. I don't have enough context about what's happening in that system. So there, I, the answer to your question is more. Four times a day on Instagram and Twitter. And I know you didn't grow up using it, but you figured out how to use Instagram. You're gonna figure out how to use Twitter. You're gonna figure out how to post on LinkedIn. That's just real. That's who you are. You, you've already proven it. What's up, bro? How you doing? Too well. Good. Good to see yeah. you. Good to see you too. What's going on? Too much. Come on in, everybody. What else is going on? Not too much. We got some carnival games set up. We're gonna go around and fuck around and throw yeah. darts and nice. knock pool balls around and play Let's sauce. Go. You ever play sauce? It's What's like sauce? A little hockey game. I'm ready. But, <laughs> all right. I don't think I fucking thrown a dart in like fucking. <laughs> Jesus I mean, fucking Christ. I mean, <laughs> Ooh. 
That's real good for the first dart I've thrown in fucking 600 years. Oh, God, those first two were fucking legit. I'm very happy with that. All right, one, zero. Oh, damn. Mm -hmm, that's good, Ups. That's good, Ups. Uh huh, I like where this is headed. Yep, <laughs> 1 1. 1 1. The road team puts one up on the board. This is for all the, this is for all the fucking marbles. Oh, so we're playing, this is it? 2 out of 3? Okay, all right, understood. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I get it. That's not what we're looking for. That's not what we're looking for. Okay. That might be enough. Okay. It, there's room. There's a lot of room. I am the target. Oof. Oof. I am the target. Oh, <laughs> oh fuck. I think you won. I don't fuck. Know. No. No, dude. Oh, dude. That's the one. It is, isn't it? That's the one. Let's go! <laughs> Damn it. Let's go! Burn out so strong! That's like Let's go! Well, you know, there we go. Well, that, that was just a practice shot. There we go. Get in there. Mmm, nice. Oh. Very good. Okay, cut it. God, I've not fucking played pool ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that fucking hurt. Oh, fuck. This could, this could be our day. <laughs> we might, just we might miss bed. the conference. Yeah. <laughs> Get it. Nice shot. Nice shot. Jeffrey? Break out, Lucille. <laughs> Let's go. Be careful, Nick Dio. <laughs> Fucking gonna Minnesota fats this shit. <laughs> what if I just get swept and all like people came zero on? That's gonna be really bad for your br that's gonna be really bad for your brand. Oh, that's, gonna be, that's not gonna be good. Nick Dio, did you see that? I'm slightly impressed. You're slightly impressed with that, right? Mm. I just have good hand-eye coordination, so it makes me dangerous at all times. That's what happened in darts. <laughs> That's what it is. This is a tough one. Good shit. Good shit, Ops. Thank you, sir. You were worried there for a second. You needed that one. <laughs> you were fucking up, too. All right. All right. We carry on. We redeemed the family. The family is super pumped. The collective sigh in this room was like, thank God. Thank God, we're not going out of business. <laughs> Holy shit. This is fucking cool. I don't even know what, what is this game? It's called Sauce. Sauce. So it's real hockey puck, I mean real hockey sticks. Okay, I'm in deep shit okay. here. <laughs> so, so it's based on like the idea of a saucer pass. Okay, so you I don't even know what the fuck that is. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you. Okay. If you gotta get it in the air, and then if you get it in the little goal, it's three points. If you get it in the big net, so it's three points in here, one point in yeah. here. And you can't bounce it in, it has to either hit the in, ramp, okay. or go straight in. Okay. And so the sauce, the key is you gotta roll it across the, you gotta roll it from the bottom of the stick, across, like that. Understand. Do you have to do that? Or is that no, like a good way to get in the air? a good way to get it in the air. I understand. It's to like roll it. So that mm -hmm. would have been a one pointer. Okay. And then we go kind of, we go to like fucking. 11? Yeah, 15. 15, all right, let's go. Three bucks the first time. 
Understood. All right. All right. That hit the ground. No sauce. Dead sauce. No sauce. Dead sauce. Uh, that's a little high. All right, that Fuck. All right. All right, one point. <laughs> All right. We should get a goal with that. Let's <laughs> fucking go out some shit. <laughs> All right. I'm going to win this. <laughs> Seriously. That was too good for the first three shots. I feel confident. Feeling confident. Two. <sighs> Three nothing. Three nothing. Right. It's a big lead. It's a big lead in sauce. Ooh. That was big. That was the. Right here, Ops. That was the opening I needed. That goal post got me hyped. Let's go. Three-pointer, that one's good. That fucking hurts. Do uh, you have now, can anybody know the fish sauce rules? Do I have to get it exact? Or can I go over? I think you have to go exact. I think you have to go exact. So, That's what I so if I get remember it, playing sauce. I get it in a little goal, then I go back to what? Like One. Zero. <laughs> Zero. Seven sounds right, Seven. actually. Seven sounds, sounds right. right. In the middle. Oh. oh. In the middle. Yeah! Yeah! Let's go! I love sauce. 7-1. 7-1. Let's go. That was huge. Ooh. Fuck, you're so zoned in though. This is just a foregone conclusion. I gotta get my shit together. Uh-huh. Here's the problem right now with us playing sauce. I'm gonna be here for the next fucking four hours <laughs> practicing sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Woo, that's a three. Things are getting interesting. That's a lot of momentum. Oh, the post, I love the fucking post. The post has been my friend. All right, all right. Ten, five. Nice. Nine. Seven. All right, I gotta get two. Right in the fucking middle. No. Oh! There it is. I'm gonna go left side, left side. Nope, ground. Right in the fucking middle. You're my guy. I'm right in the middle. Upper fucking fifth. Oh! oh. Hanging out for dear life. <laughs> What's it, 14? Nine. 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 Oh, God. One more. Give me one last chance. I have nine. I can three it and two it. I got it. Give me one last prayer. Yes! Intimidating, not trying to get it dead center. <sighs> Fuck. <laughs> Just ripping them. <laughs> Sauce. Right in the fucking middle. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> this is such a good idea. I'm gonna start bringing people to Vaynerita to play games that I play all the time <laughs> and the other person's never played. Such a good idea. <laughs> all right, let's go shoot hoops. God, I haven't been on since the, uh... oh, you weren't there. Did you hear about that? Holy shit. <laughs> you all right? 
I haven't, I haven't played since. I haven't shot a basketball in like forever. Feel good. See you. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Yeah, Gary, that's like your number one super fan. That's awesome. That's so sweet. Mm -hmm. She's also the greatest. <laughs> All my fans are the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> You know, usually when I go on podcasts or things of that nature, I'm like trying to answer the questions. I'm thinking, I've already done it once here, I'm listening, so I'm thinking of new things to say. That really stopped me dead in my tracks, and I'm gonna tell you why. I'm obsessed with perspective. Like, I genuinely believe you find what you're looking for. If you are looking for bad right now, it's a piece of cake. If you're looking for good right now, it's a piece of cake. I'm just asking you what the fuck are you looking for? Like, please, it's just a very simple question. Like, and by the way, I, I hate, in a lot of ways I hate the way I talk because it's super simple and I'm sitting right now thinking about the kid who's listening to this and she or he is in her room right now, ear pods in, listening to this and they're miserable because their dad's an alcoholic or their mom's this or like real shit, you know, like tough stuff. And they're like, ugh, it's so, like fuck you. It's not that simple, yet it is. Like, you know, one thing I don't do well is talk about my problems, it, which manifests in many ways. It manifests in being taken for granted in my real life and in my collective life, my outward life. And I got fucking problems. I got lots of problems, real ones. I grew up with lots of this stuff. Like, lots and lots and lots of stuff. I just am not capable of going into it. Like, I don't, I don't get going. Like, I can't get there. And so, one of the things that, I, you know, 
that I try to remind kids, I'm like, take me out of the equation. Like, don't even use me when I'm saying these things. If you know of one person that has ever gotten to a happy place that dealt with your circumstance, there is a blueprint. The end. It, there have been people, Night Train Lane, legendary football player, was thrown in a dumpster the second he was born. Went on to be one of the great football players of all time, dated every actress in the game, was Red Fox's bodyguard, iconic gentleman. Dumpster. Like, like there's all sorts of circumstances. Yeah. And we all have our fucking dumpsters. Everybody's got a dumpster, bro. And and you know who has dumpsters? I apologize. You know who has dumpsters? Kids that have too much. You want to talk about who I'm actually getting hit up by? It's not the kid in the hood that saw me with, you know, Gunna, and they think I'm cool now, and they're like, how do I get other? It's kids that are trust fund babies who are sick. Listen, and I know this. I never judge somebody that comes from a shitty circumstance. I'm a cheerleader. I'm an underdog guy, right? I cheer that. I see, I, I meet you, and we're friends, and then like, we're at a dinner party and my friend comes home and goes, you know who that is, right? Like that's the grandson of fucking Howard Hughes. I immediately judge that person. Nothing that person ever achieves, I'll give credit to. That's me, that's actually how I see the world. I will not fully give credit to my own children because of that reason. I really, I'm being very transparent here. I would much rather, in a world of the internet where the internet doesn't care who you are, I would much rather in 2019 come from too little than come from too much. Not in 19, 19- 84, because there was no internet and all those relationships and all that money really mattered. But I believe that we're living in a very funny time where clout, reputation, work ethic, a lot of different things are starting to be put on pedestals, not just money and earning your keep and who you are and what you're giving to the world. And I think we're living in a very interesting transition. Whatever you have, it changes your start position and that can be overwhelming, right? It's all about what you do with what you have from where you, where you begin. And right? by the way, it's all perspective, right? For me, as somebody who takes so much pride in the process, I wouldn't have wanted to start on third and a half base. Somebody else listening right now is like, I'm pretty cool with it. Pretty pumped, pops, well, just, made 50, you know, and, you, and that's you fine. start on third and a half base, you better fucking hit it 500 feet. Or, and keep, but, keep by the way, right? but here's where it's really fun. Here's where it gets super like interesting. Or not, and guess what? Who the fuck are all of us? <laughs> You're on third and a half base and you end up on second and a half base and what? You're gonna, and this is actually the punchline. I want, like actually if somebody's listening right now, if you're somebody who's like 50, 60, 70 and you started on third and a half base and ended on second and a half base but you're pumped as fuck and happy for real, please email me. I'm really like, I just wanna know that insight because I actually think it's the reverse of me. What, excuse me, I think it's similar to me which is what actually happens when you can calibrate judgment? I believe one of the biggest reasons that I'm one of the forefront faces of all this is because I can handle the judgment. You know how much hate I have? There's a video right now of a young woman doing a motivational speech. She crushed it. It's going a little viral on Twitter. I'm getting destroyed by the comments. <laughs> They're like, yeah, fuck that Gary Vee guy. I know that's who you're freaking making fun of. That hurts. And most people are folding their chairs when they get judged like that. I'm not because I know every one of those people who said that have never met me. I can handle judgment if you don't know me. If Caleb and Nick Dio thought I was a dick face, then I would have a real problem. Well, then it's a truer reflection. But even, it's, even it's, still, it's not the truest. Like, are we correct. ourselves are the truest mirror of ourselves. If we actually are fair and we actually look without the biases that we all bring, then we're the only ones. I mean, Bodie Miller was someone who taught me so that, true. right? He was like, if someone pumps your tires, they don't know you. If they congratulate you on that, like he would get congratulated on finishing a race and he didn't like the race, he couldn't take that. He's like, well, I didn't fucking ski at my best. And he would ski his best sometimes, crash or not finish well, and everybody would be like, oh, sorry, man. He'd be like, fuck you, man. Like, I fucking skied my best, you but, know what I mean? Man, that's like, cool. honestly, like that just got me fired up about Bodie. I'm the same way, man. Like, like it's unbelievable how I just, I, do not take the accolades and I do not take the hate. I'm just fucking in the middle. I'm in my own head. It's really uh, a reflection of who's saying it. It's not even a reflection I'll, I'll of be honest, their I'll appreciate. You'll appreciate this. It doesn't even go that far, bro. Honestly, <laughs> I've got ear pods in 24 seven. Can't hear shit. <laughs> From my mom to a stranger, just don't hear it. I don't know what else to tell you. I'm in a very fucking place, a very interesting place on this. It, you know what it's driven by? Empathy. I know they don't know me. They don't know me. They just can't fucking begin to know me. Like, I hate Scottie Pippen. I don't know Scottie Pippen. So I understand it. I fucking hate Scottie Pippen. I, I, 
despise Tom Brady. And, for, and I actually know a lot of people that know him and it sounds like he's a fairly solid dude. I still fucking hate him. And so like, if I'm willing to do that, then everyone's willing to do that. And, and then that's, permission and that's that. it. And so like, but, but I think judgment is on tilt. Judgment is like fucking, I'm telling you man, like that's all we're doing now. People are just fucking hot taking each other 24-7, 365, mm-hmm. casting judgment at scale. Judgment is on tilt. Judgment is, uh, has momentum. Judgment is the, is, the, is the undertone right now and honestly I want to push so against it or calibrate it. Yeah. You know, like I'm just, I, I've lost so much momentum in judging somebody you can't imagine in the last five years. Everybody does it, it's a human trait but like mine doesn't get going anymore. Like I'm just like, I don't know anything about anybody. That was awesome. I think people are gonna really enjoy that. Fuck yeah. That was a good one. Yeah, that was sick. Love it. What's that just to work on? Like, lots of the same. I think I'll probably. It's not like sleep. No, you know what's funny? I actually value sleep a lot more than I do. You know, like I I sleep like six or seven. Like it might be just general. The real question will become: Will I ever take a step off as just a period of time before I step on? Like that's what I'm asking now. I'm in such a swirl, constant motion. Like, will I want to or will I need to literally just take? Not like take a gap year and take a year off, but like, it, you know, it's it's quite a challenge to like, I'm macro stimulated, yeah, right. you know? No, like, for sure. Like, super macro. You can't walk off the stage with 9,000 people and not just be ready to go for 48 hours. That's right. And it's like, and it's and honestly, it's super, and, and by the way, or just have a nice podcast session where you're like yeah. feeling good about it, like that can get, like, I'm just in, in perpetual motion and you know, you always, you know, have to think about how sustainable that is, right? Like, For sure. Know. Like, just, we have seen. But I'm so calm. I'm like, it's like, like, I'm just, I guess what I said in that interview is the truth. It's super good now. I'm not going to overstress it. And if, like, I, I don't, you know, I don't know. Either either I'm doing a cliche thing where you don't recognize it and you crack, or, or I won't crack. Right. It's not super complicated. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's just. <laughs> what? It's cr- it's just every bank robbing movie ever, you know. It's like they're gonna get one more. They're gonna get one more. <laughs> 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 so I'm, I'm, if I was a betting man, so, I think you're right. Like it makes I don't sense. know. I don't think you're no, crack. No, no, I honestly, believe in you more than anything. I don't, yeah, I don't think right? I'll crack. I don't like think I'm ever pretty crack. confident that right. I don't crack in like a crack. crazy. Movie. Yes. Right. I think no, my version of that will be like, fuck. I'm really genuinely unhappy yeah. professionally for the first time in my career. Let me spend the next 12 to 18 months to unwind sure. my responsibility to allow me to mix it up. This song. This song. Got a second wave of like life when I was in high school. It's probably ready for another one then, right? It might be. <laughs> All right. I gotta know right now. Who is this? Who does this song? Meatloaf. Really? Yeah. That makes sense. I highly recommend you don't put it in part of the vlog. You're gonna get destroyed. Uh, is that? Oh, not know it. Yeah. Well, now I'm going to. Big overlap with the Meatloaf crabs. Wave. Even worse, my visual of it is when he was a coach, a guest coach on American Idol. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. that's going in too. <laughs> Did you know Gary hosted Miss America? I was a judge, right? <laughs> wait, wait, what? <laughs> I, I judged it's Miss crazy. America. No. Click. A chance to add one more contestant as the 16th semifinalist. So, put your... I will never forget this that is call. Early. This is like, five years yeah, ago. Yeah. Hello? Yeah? <laughs> hey, Gary, it's da-da-da. I'm like, yeah. 
Look, we're, we're seriously considering, uh, you know, we're trying to expand a little bit and looking for somebody in social. Like, would you consider judging Miss America? Let me think about it. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was amazing. It was amazing. It was just really like a fun thing. It was especially fun for me because when we first, when we lived in Edison, like, the, one of the most American things for me is when we made it, is when we moved to the suburbs in Edison. Yeah. And one of the best things we did with my mom, me and my sister, for like, like from 1982 to 1988 was like award shows. It was a big thing. Yeah. Like we'd all get in my mom's bed and we would watch and we'd try to guess. Yeah. Like award shows, like any of them. The Grammys, Grammys the Tony, Oscars, the, yeah. and then like, and things like Miss America. So like, it, that's why it was so fun for me. Miss America 1984 through 1988, laying in my mom's bed with my sister and watching that competition and trying to guess who won is a core early American story to my heart. So I'm here because I'm selfish. Um, because it meant something to me growing up and I thought it would mean a lot for me and my family, my sister, mom specifically, that I'm here. I was correct, they're both very emotional, excited, and I'm happy to do that. I always think in terms of like, when I do something, when I call my mom, what does she think? You know? What does she think of like, look how far we've come, right? You know? That's cool. Yeah, that's why the, that's why you got to beat my face right, if you yeah. decide to use it. Uh, oof, that's heavy for me. Yeah. The sneaker was crazy, yeah. but this is unreal. unreal. It smells like a college dorm room. <laughs> <laughs> right? So we're just about to get going. Look at this beautiful theater, theater, Caleb. Look at just like this old school shit that I like so much. Anyway, uh, you know, thousand people in a theater in Austin, Texas. I have a very funny feeling I'm about to go completely off the fucking rocker because the energy of more people always gets me to a totally different place. So, super psyched. Uh, and then from here, rushing very quickly. Uh, as you guys know, because you watch a lot of my content, I don't tend to go private, but I gotta get on a private play because I'm gonna be in Nashville tomorrow morning, right early, bright and early, uh, a keynote in Nashville. I gotta run home because tomorrow's May 3rd, one of my favorite days of the year, my mom's birthday. So I gotta rush home. Uh, give love there and get into the weekend. And so um, it's been a pretty intense, uh, pretty intense fucking week for even for me. Like fly to San Francisco, red eye back, go right into work all day, 11:15. Wake up at 3 a.m. Private flight to Ohio with a client. Three at 3:30 in the morning, which is the earliest flight I've ever taken. Land quickly, catch a flight from here to from Ohio, Columbus to here in Austin. Uh, now rolling hardcore this whole day. Landed in Nashville tonight at midnight. Go at 7 a.m. Like, it's fucking perpetual fucking motion. When you're in it, when you're one with your thing, it, it sounds intense coming out of my mouth, but um, it's easier than sitting through first class science. What up, what up? Hi Gary, this is my first time coming, but uh, I'm a high, high school student, so I'm gonna graduate uh, in June. But uh, I, have, I always have a plan to do, but my parents, they don't want me like to give myself a chance, and they always want me to go to college, and I try and ask them for time like to do something, mm -hmm. but they said like, uh, they want me, to, like they want to see the result of what I'm doing quickly, and uh, they always like forcing me to go to college and uh, and stuff. And they said like if I really want to do my own thing, they want me to go to college and at the same time work on my plan. Okay. And at the same time also want me to help them with their business. And I said I couldn't do that. So what would be like advice you would give like? As you, sh you should go do your own thing. But like my surrounding, they just like so forcing me to do what they want me to do instead of giving but, me a chance. But they're not in charge. They're only in charge if you're using their home and their money. Okay, and plus my mom, she was like, she said that I am disappointed her because of my choice. Of course, because she's using psychological pressure for you to do what she wants. Yeah. 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 Woo. Mm -hmm. The only thing you have to figure out is if they have any leverage. The only leverage they have is money, shelter, and psychological warfare. <laughs> yes, I'm living with them, so yeah. What's that? I'm living with them, so. 
well, if you're gonna wanna go do your own thing, you're gonna have to move. <laughs> and you're not gonna have to, you're, like, here's my big thing with kids. Like, as you can tell, I'm very pro you. But if you're gonna go do this thing that's disappointing them, then you can't take from them either because then you're being spoiled. So if you feel so passionate about this thing that you wanna go do, go do it. But don't expect them to support it because they don't believe in it. Yes, they don't believe in it. So no. go stick it in their face. <laughs> right? Um, let, let me tell you one thing about parents, and this is very common. They may be upset now, but if you go and pull this off, they will not be disappointed. And more importantly, if you go and try this, deep down one day, they'll tell you secretly that they're not disappointed. Thank you. You're welcome. I want to, I want to thank you because you inspired me to help my dad uh, market his business. And I, I, you really inspired me to, to go back and, and, and get with the family and, and help them upgrade. But also, uh, I have a barbecue podcast. I have um, uh, a ton of pizza bars. I, got, I just wrote 10K on Instagram. So, I'm going to food. Where are you guys going? I'm going to big event this week. I'm trying to do 10 minute vlogs. What do you suggest for someone who's trying to do media around food? You got it. Thank you. Uh, link, I'll leave with this. Like, we've gone very high level here tonight. Let me go very tactical. LinkedIn right this minute yeah. is acting the same exact way that Facebook in 2009, 10, and 11 was working. You could post about anything, not just business stuff, and the organic reach is ridiculous. I highly recommend that every single person tomorrow puts their first post on LinkedIn in video or written form. I think you will be astonished by what happens. Austin! I gotta go. It's true, it's true. It's true. Let's go, bro. I love you back. Yes. Let's go. Fast. Can I really send you that email? You really can send me that email. It's not gonna, it's not gonna send. Don't tell hey, anybody. Gary, I'm trying to see how incognito. Gary, I got the attention. You had him. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Guys, I gotta go. I'm gonna miss this fucking flight. Guys, I'm gonna miss this fucking flight. Oh, keep it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Get them safe. Thank you for coming. See ya. Bye, guys. Bye. See you guys. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Work, bud. I got everything. There we go. I gotta go. Catch my flight. I love you, bro. I love you too, man. Beautiful Thank you. Day, man. Thank, Thank you, you so man. much. Airport Gary. Airport Gary. <laughs> I can walk a little bit if like. You wanna walk? Is this, yeah, let's, let's walk. Right let's pull it up right yeah, let's let's walk. I saw you in LA. I told you I'd scrub your floors with my toothbrush. Yes. And I emailed you an email. I got you. I was you. never able to get in touch with you. Yay. Is it still possible? It's still me? possible, bro. How do I do this? Just keep fucking emailing me. All I right. promise you, we're going I'm through gonna it. I'm going to keep doing it. Please, that's right. the way to do it. All right. Guys, Whose birthday? Use it on my sister. Let's go. Take a picture Let's do it. Thank you. Here, I got some fire beats for your blog. And then what's going on? Yo, some beats for your blog. Well, I'm going to watch them, but I watch them every day. Thank you, Gary. Caleb, beats. Hey, make sure you're on the floor. Got you. Got you. One, two, three. Yes, sir. I got all my contact area. Real quick, real quick. I'm really going to miss this flight, fellas. Hey, Gary, look at the Polaroid. I will. Got it. Let's go. Let's go. Old school, baby. All right, one, two, three. What's up, bro? Thank you, man. Thank you, man. What's up, man? I'm going to contact with my boy. Right here, right here. Awesome music. He go, you know, he goes, he, he goes, he goes. He's got, he goes through heavy on his DM. Like heavy. Whatever, Instagram, both? Both. He goes through it heavy. I'm gonna answer eventually. How do you feel about subject lines? How do you feel about Canada with the Instagram like shit? You see what they did? I'm about that. I'm about that. I, it's something I've been talking about for six months, which is if you got rid of the likes, everybody would be a much better fucking place. And this is somebody who gets a lot of likes, but fuck it. And the eSports shit, there's so many people investing in that. Uh, Long term. It's real. It's real. Appreciate it. Thank you. We got three more. All right, two more, two more.
I know. All right, I gotta go. See ya. Take care. You're welcome. Thank you. Good luck. Hey, quick Pleasure. Oh, wait. Hey. Sorry, man. Oh, you're gonna love my hey, I actually met you downtown and uh, oh, what's up? But hey, uh, quick, 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 thank you. Yeah. I gotta really, really go. Okay, okay. I gotta okay. really, really go. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you, bro. Uh, thank yeah, you. Good to see you again, real quick. You got it. So, take care, everyone. We're done. I love you, Dio. See ya. Later, Dio. We need to? Yeah, okay. All right, off to Nashville. Uh, straight up, like if you're watching this, it would mean so much to me if you hit the bell, hit the subscribe, like be part of this. Thank you. Geo Wing.